tissue engineering for the anterior segment in glaucoma. The title of my session is Giving Patients Hope. Um, that made me think a little bit because, of course, I want to give my patients somewhat more than just hope. I want to give them a lower IOP. Um, so let's see whether we can achieve this by means of regeneration and restoration or by means of tissue engineering. First, let's talk about restoring outflow with drugs. This is something we're already doing. Trabecular cytoblation and repopulation. Third, prostaglandin gene therapy. And fourth, chronic distal outflow tract dilation. Restoring outflow with drugs. This is the Goldman equation. F is the aqueous humor formation minus u, the u square outflow, and divided uh, by c, the outflow facility, plus the episcleral venous pressure. c and u, u square outflow and outflow facility decrease as we get older and more so in glaucoma. Um, and you see what happens here, and, and that results in an increased IOP. <clears throat> This is the outflow pathway of a young human, good low conciliary body. Uh, this is the outflow pathway of an elderly human uh, with a lot of extracellular matrix material, especially here in the ciliary body and elsewhere in the uveoscleral outflow pathway. This also um, probably isn't the most encouraging slide as far as restoring accommodation is concerned. And perhaps these two um, are more related than we usually like to think. Ubiosclera alpha enhancing drugs are of course prostaglandin analogs. They upregulate matrix metalloproteinases which break down the extracellular matrix. Brimonidin is uh, something that um, also increases the uveus scleral outflow, but not very much so. Um, it's probably just because it weakens the ciliary body, which improves the outflow. Um, no enzyme or no set of enzymes, as far as I'm aware, has been shown to be upregulated by brimonidin, so it's probably an indirect effect. Conventional outflow, uh, we can restore by using rho kinase inhibitors, uh, which relax the cytoskeleton of trabecular meshwork cells and um, change their behavior, their migration, their um, phagocytosis. Uh, so these are not just on off um, very quick switches, but they are lasting. Pilocarpin stretches the trabecular meshwork, so there you're restoring uh, that component. Um, that is a little shorter lift, perhaps, but it's restoring. Um, this is a slide I wanted to show you because we like to think of drugs as something transient and not really long-lasting and powerful, but um, all these patients here use prostaglandin analogs in their left eyes. What does it do? Well, it, uh, this causes permanent orbital fat atrophy. Um, it also causes less permanent tightening of the skin, um, which is sometimes is termed chemical blepharoplasty. We can also lower the episcleral venous pressure with drugs um, if narrowed collector channels and um, distal outflow tract vessels are in fact part of the pathology of glaucoma. We don't know that yet for sure, but we know that when we dilate those, we can get a pressure drop. So what would uh, drop the pressure? Well, nitric oxide donors like latanoprostine bunot or rho kinase inhibitors can dilate these vessels and lower pressure. Trabecular cytoablation um, and repopulation. This is also something that's been done for uh, quite some time. This is uh, a very interesting study by Ted Acott from 1989. You see a human anterior segment upside down. Here's the cornea. Here's Schwalbe's line with the hypothetical insert zone where stem cells uh, live. <clears throat> they might also be more diffuse in the trabecular meshwork, but at least this is uh, a neat story and makes sense when you look at this slide. The laser was applied to the pigmented line here, and you can see that there are cells migrating, um, suggesting that in fact something migrates down to repair this damage and restores the function, lowering pressure. 
This here is a model by Abu Hassan where um, anterior segments were perfused with saponin that has detergent-like properties and weakens um, or slightly damages the trabecular meshwork. This damage can be restored by infusing induced stem cells. Um, you can see that the so-called homeostatic response is restored if there is in fact such a thing. Uh, but uh, usually when you increase pressure or increase uh, the flow rate, there's a com compensatory mechanism by the trabecular meshwork to get back to where it was before. So in by increasing outflow. My lab um, cloned a, cy a conditional cytotoxic FIV vector. It expresses herpes simplex virus thymidin kinase and through an internal ribosomal entry site, EGFP. Um, when you apply this to a monolayer and add gancyclovir, this causes a cytopathic effect unknown from herpes viruses, rounding, uh, rounding, uh, rounding of cells, detaching, and then dying. This here is an in vivo model in the rat. The um, transduced trabecular meshwork that then goes dark. You can barely make it out, but it's there. Um, and what happens in vivo is that the intraocular pressure drops when this occurs here. Histologically, the cells regenerate and grow back and the pressure rebounds. TM repopulation of TM matrices is a model we um, developed using freeze thawing. These transduced cells disappear. One can use trabecular meshwork cells to repopulate the structure. They migrate into the trabecular meshwork beams. Other cells don't do this. These are CRFK cells. CRFK cells they stay at the surface. Um, and they do not restore the function. The restoring of the function you can see here, reseeded as blue, uh, and you can see that this is somewhat alike, a little higher perhaps, um, but um, it's not, it's not um, glaucomatous. This is a in vivo model by the Dew Lab at the University of Pittsburgh, across from the hall where I used to have my lab. Um, they used myocillin mutant POAC mice and injected them with trabecular meshwork stem cells from a different mouse. They get washed into the trabecular meshwork and break down the extracellular matrix, which increases the outflow facility and reduces the IOP and improves or maintains the function of the optic nerve. Prostaglandin gene therapy. You can see here a prostaglandin pathway that uses two components. One is cyclooxygenase and PGF to alpha. When both are injected into a cat eye, this lowers the intraocular pressure for quite some time. Distal alpha tract dilation. This is an just using drugs at this point, but we used our porcine eye model to show that you can get cyto, uh, dilation of these alpha tract vessels that is progressive over 188 minutes. So that's surprisingly long. Um, the diameter increases over this time as well, and the pressure drops as a result of this dilation after the trabecular meshwork is removed. Uh, you have to hit the right concentration though. If you use a high concentration, you actually might get a pressure increase. And this has something to do with a, um, an interaction with the norepinephric um, receptors that um, interferes with that. Using nitric oxide, one can show something very similar here too. The vessels visibly dilate. Um, and lower the eye pressure after the trabecular meshwork is removed. 
Now, the goal, of course, would be to make this longer lasting and truly restorative uh, rather than just using um, drops several times a day, perhaps, uh, or once a day. Um, so what kind of vectors could one use? Well, first off, is it even possible? In this model here, we removed the trabecular meshwork. We applied um, lentivalent vectors, and you can see that they have, in fact, transduced the distal outflow tract, these little vessels here. Well, the vectors um, we were thinking of um, and have designed um, can consist of a rho kinase, SIRNA knockdown, transgene, ENOS, um, but also, um, which is the endothelial nitric oxide, uh, oxide synthesase, VEGFA and VEGFC are also very interesting candidates because uh, they are vasodilative, but they are also something that you can use to grow um, an outflow tract structure or even perhaps induce valves with VEGFC worth looking at. In summary, we restored outflow with drugs. We've been doing this for some time and prostaglandins are particularly good at that. Trabecular cytoblation and repopulation. SRT does this quite well. The other ones are really more or less uh, experimental. Prostaglandin gene therapy has been shown and works. Chronic distal outflow tract dilation, I think we're pretty close to that. With this, I want to thank all my lab members and collaborators. I want to thank you for your attention.